Well, you can hear the chain. See, they're showing up. You can hear it? You can hear it. Oh, cool, man. Post that somewhere? Yeah, on the web, yeah. Where at? The ATU site? Yeah, I'll give it to Jeff and me. What about that? Hey, man, of course Ross is here. <laughs> This is here, Ross Reed. I'm marching with you guys. There we go. Retirees and solidarity. And here. Okay, everybody, put on your mask. <laughs> <laughs> We're fishing, everybody. Yeah, they're not really extra yeah. No extra sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, with that, I thank you very much, and uh, congratulations on a full funding hearing. That is great. Neil, did you have anything else? No, that concludes my comments. Thank okay. you. Um, for the board, do we have any comments or questions uh, for Neil or George? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, moving on then. Um, uh, at this time, we usually get an update from the committee met, and we talked about one topic, uh, that topic being the leases and the remodeling of the of the TriMet staff will then be leased to an office, there will be an office space in downtown Portland. So we talked about all of that reorganization and how it's going to happen and the timing. Uh, and the need for, to, for this uh, change is the expansion of the control center. Uh, of course, that goes along with the expansion of the rail system. The need for additional office space to replace buildings that will be demolished along uh, 17th and greater efficiency of having all the operations of personnel in one location. So that was the, the topic we talked about and uh, we will have an additional briefing, um, I think it's at board meeting in June, which we're at, so um, if there's any questions from anybody on the board, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Thank you, Tiffany, appreciate Thank you. that. So the last uh, report this morning uh, is regarding the Committee on Accessible Transportation. Is this on? Everybody here all right back there? <laughs> get a little closer. There we go. So our, our um, uh, last report this morning is regarding the Committee on Accessible Transportation, or CAT as we lovingly call it. So Dr. Bethel, I believe you have an update for us this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning. Uh, for the CAT meeting, um, which uh, happened on the May 16th and May 21st, things are being addressed and we are thankful for that. That concludes my report, unless there are some questions from the board. Questions for Dr. Bethel? No, thank you very thank much, you. Dr. Bethel. Appreciate it. The signatures for the full funding grant agreement that occurred um, in May. Uh, in addition, there's another seventy million dollars of a new authorization, eleven uh, million dollars. Um, I know I actually would ask Beth to come up in case there are questions on this. Uh, uh, for this resolution. The TriMet OPEB retirement fund is not being funded at actual expenses. Instead, TriMet only contributes about 18% of the cost, leaving a deficit of 82% funding and ongoing debt piling up. It's management of the budget. And bring it to a responsible effort for current and future debt that are balanced. Let us remember that the function of the board of directors, directors is to set the agenda followed by the staff to carry out the request, not the other way around. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Peterson, I, I had the opportunity to talk to you about some things back in the, the big look task force and a variety of things in your paper, your organization covers a lot of these things. It's stunning that such a severe level. Uh, I represent Oregon Health District 29, uh, Western Washington County area. And I just, first off, want to couch this in terms of thanking you for your service. I understand that you are often required to have all these wisdom while trying to figure out how to match the, we can afford that debt and the debt was reasonable and for a good purpose. I'm concerned because you also do not have, as far as I can see, <laughs> that the off balance sheet transactions are what, what brought down such large organizations such as Enron. A debt is a debt, whether it is for retirement or whether it's to Wall Street, whether it's for post employment benefits, a debt is a debt. And retirement commitments can't be deferred in perpetuity. Eventually, they will come due. And that due annual payment, how to pay off the significant existing debt, the unfunded liability, how are you going to do that? And you can't simply look at the same financial tools, the same band-aids of federal dollars on increased services, on coming to the legislature for more payroll tax increases or extensions of payroll tax, or increasing right affairs substantially while diminishing services. Your hold, your financial hold, is too deep to rely on a more bag of tricks. You need to fully consider all the options on the table before you move forward in making a decision on next year's budget. I'm not the same person who sat here before you four months ago. I've learned so much being a part of OPAL during this climate budget process. 
It's been incredibly empowering for me to be able to delve into and read our bus riders tonight budget alternative into the record. This budget decision is too important to rush into a decision. Don't make a decision today. Please take the time you need to fully consider all the different alternatives. Thank you. By providing access to work, school, and other daily necessities, by reducing single occupancy vehicle trips, meaning also reducing greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, and by supporting active transportation as a we're going to face every single day in the form of higher fares and less service. And we haven't seen that conversation take place here at the board. So what we're asking for today is that you hold off on making any final vote on the ordinances or on the final budget package, that you read our budget proposal into the record. We have Edgar and Teresa. Yes, and if you have never had the experience of feeling like a second class citizen, just go out to a bus stop that has no shelter, wear your raincoat, rain boots, and your umbrella. Stand there during one of our thunder and lightning, the sky rips open rainstorms. You will get soaking wet. Make sure that you pick a bus stop that is right on the road. So that there are those my motion writers who do not have an alternative. We're losing their precious contributions to society every day. I volunteer with people who rely on the bus as their only means of getting out of the house. And I have $1.5 million dollars in additional health care costs related to asthma, chronic lung disease, and heart attacks, and just in the city of Boston. These estimates also suggest that as more drivers seek the road, a number of preventable deaths from automobile accidents will occur and will also contribute to an additional 70 persons being able to. Nicole, and then following that is Cynthia Gomez and. Uh, uh, Robert Yes. Uh, fares and cutting service again. I was down because I knew that it was going to be difficult for me to afford the honor citizen pass and would restrict me from making trips to find jobs or visiting family and friends. I want to ask you to please not raise the fares or cut service. I would request that some lines like the 71 run longer on weekdays it ends at 10 22 p.m., meaning that I cannot have a night job or see family and friends because I can't get back to my home if I go to the restroom. Every dollar you raise in fares is one less hamburger that I can eat. It means I can see fewer movies. I receive SSB and do not receive money for recreation. I hey, uh, put in so much energy into big home run projects like future rail projects. Private should go back to the basics of pitching, catching, funding, and putting people on base. In transit terms, all around the world, this translates into low-cost, innovative, high-frequency bus service. It's not headline grabbing, but it does work. Uh, more riders equals more money. Is that not a viable business model? So rather than continue to go in the direction of becoming a high-priced specialty service, please, climate board, let's do what we can to adopt Opal's budget plan or a similar alternative. Um, run the lunch really quick. Can I, can I borrow five bucks? Before you answer, know that I actually do have twenty dollars in my wallet, but I'm not going to save it for anything. So. <laughs> 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 Thank you.